Hey everybody, I'm back in my favorite chair and ready to continue reading the story of Gobi. Remember, we left off yesterday with Dion Leonard starting a race today with 125 degree heat. And so he leaves Gobi behind to come with the race car people and meet him at the end of the race. Let's get started. But that didn't stop Dion from missing her. The starting gun sounded and they were off. A bunch of runners shoved past, trying to take an early lead. Dion let them. He wasn't too worried. He was having a great race so far, but it was more than that. He was good at the long distances and at handling the heat. Not everyone was. They were using up a lot of valuable energy by sprinting now, and they wouldn't have a chance to rest and recharge later. Today's race was all about being smart and conserving energy as much as possible. Fortunately, they didn't have any wind today. Tommy was off running his own race, and Dion didn't see him after the start. Though boiling hot, the day was clear, and Dion settled into a nice, easy stride. He wasn't worried about coming in first. The important thing was to make sure he could cover the full distance. A lot of runners wouldn't be able to do that. As long as he reached the finish line today, he'd be in good shape. Time passed. Several times, Dion saw runners walking, already exhausted. Many of them st stared as he jogged by. He just waved, but not meanly. A few even cheered him on or clapped for him. He was covering the distance well and felt good and strong. He had this. He also decided it was time to finally use his secret weapon, his iPod. The tiny device would run only for a few hours, so he hadn't bothered with it before this. On a day like today, it was the perfect way to distract him and let his body handle the running. Dion pulled out the iPod, put in his earbuds, and hit play. The music started and he could feel his spirits lifting. This was exactly what he needed. Dion didn't stop at every checkpoint. It was important to refill your water bottles whenever you could, and it helped to check in with the race crew. They were being especially careful today. It was much too easy for a runner to get heat stroke out here. If that wasn't caught in time, it could become heat exhaustion, which was very dangerous. When someone had heat exhaustion, they got foggy. They could no longer make smart choices, including knowing when it was time to get help. People could die from heat exhaustion, so the medical team was making sure every runner was okay. Dion felt fine, and at the checkpoint, volunteers quickly allowed him to keep going, but another runner wasn't having such an easy time. It was Tommy. He looked terrible. He was slumped in a chair while several volunteers sprayed him with water or fanned him with a clipboard. But Tommy still looked dazed. He also looked more tired than Dion had ever seen him. The heat had clearly taken its toll on him, and he wasn't looking to leave the tent quickly. Or he was just having a bad day, but Tommy was still one of the people ahead of Dion in the overall race. If he wasn't running well today, that gave Dion a chance to pull ahead. Dion was listening to his music and heard a volunteer ask him if Tommy could run with him. Dion agreed because it was what you did, looking after a fellow runner. Races like this were more about doing your best than about beating someone. And if you did beat the other runner, you did it fair and square. You didn't take advantage of someone, and you never turned your back on a fellow runner in need. Tommy nodded and rose from his seat. He came over to stand by Dion. He still looked wobbly, though. Are you sure you're okay, Tommy? Dion asked. Yes, I'm just struggling a bit. It's too hot. His voice was so weak, Dion could barely hear him, and he was swaying on his feet. But when Dion started running, Tommy ran with him. It was even hotter than before. Dion liked that. He enjoyed the heat. He felt good. Only three people were ahead of him right now, including Zeng, and Dion knew he could catch up. This was his chance to take the lead. He picked up his pace. Tommy kept up, but it was clear he was struggling. Dion felt bad for him, but he didn't slow down. They reached a long, sandy, straight section with no shade. Come on, Tommy, 
Dion told the other runner. Let's run the flags. The pink markers were set in a line every 50 feet. Tommy sped up to match Dion as they ran to the first marker. Then they slowed down and walked to the next one. They ran to the next and walked and kept up that pattern for a while. The ground around them became sandier and rose uh, and rose to form sand canyons, but the tracks was still straight and solid. Dion increased his speed again. He was careful not to overdo it, but he was starting to cut into Zing's lead. He noticed that Tommy wasn't running beside him anymore. That was fine, though. He must have decided to walk for a bit. But a part of Dion worried about Tommy. Was he still okay? He slowed down and finally stopped. Then he looked back. Tommy was swaying on his feet, flailing his arms to keep his balance. He looked like he was caught in an earthquake. Dion felt his heart sink, but he didn't hesitate. He turned and ran back toward Tommy instead. Tommy, tell me what's going on, he said when he reached the runner. Too hot. Tommy mumbled back. His words were slurred. He pitched forward suddenly, and Dion just barely caught him in time. This was bad. Dion checked his watch. They were a little more than a mile into the section. The next checkpoint was another three miles ahead. It was just past one, and the sun was right overhead. The day was only going to get hotter, and the only shade around was provided by some rocks maybe a half a mile away. There was no way Tommy would be able to make it back to the last checkpoint on his own. He could barely stand. He had also already drained both of his water bottles. They had left the last checkpoint only 30 minutes ago. I need to sit, Tommy declared. He slumped down in the sand right there on the path. Can you wait? There's no sitting here, Tommy, Dion warned him. You've got to get up in some shade. He couldn't carry Tommy back to the last checkpoint, but he did manage to drag him toward the rocks that he'd spotted. It took 20 minutes and Dion was exhausted by the time they reached the shade. Still, he didn't have a choice. They couldn't risk waiting for someone else to come along. Listen, Tommy, Dion said once he'd set him down. You need help. I'm going to keep going to the next checkpoint and get them to drive back to you, okay? He knew he could return to the he knew he could return to the last checkpoint too, but he just couldn't bear the thought of going backwards. I don't want to run anymore, Tommy mumbled. Dion nodded. I know, mate. You don't have to. Just stay here and wait for them to come. Don't move. Dion had one water bottle left. He handed it to Tommy, then rose to his feet. It was time to go. Helping Tommy had cost Dion a lot. He'd lost 45 minutes of his time. He'd also given away the last of his water, and he'd done it all in 120-degree heat. That had used up all his energy he'd been saving, and then some. But Dion couldn't stop now. If he did, Tommy could die. So, so could he. He had to make it to the next checkpoint. Half a mile from the checkpoint, Dion spotted a race car. The organizers used them to patrol the race in case any runner needed help. He flagged it down and told them what had happened. You've got to get there quickly, he warned. He's in real trouble and I'm out of water myself. You haven't got any water, have you? The driver handed over a half-empty bottle. They must have handed out all the other water to the other runners. It would have to be enough. Dion made it to the checkpoint and collapsed in a chair. Then he told them about Tommy all over again. He also gulped down as much water as he could. He was feeling weak and queasy. His head hurt and his heart was pounding, but he was still thinking clearly. It was bad, but it wasn't heat exhaustion. After he'd recovered a little, Dion thought to ask about Zing. He was surprised to hear that the Chinese runner was only 20 minutes ahead. He must have been having trouble in the heat, too, which meant that Dion still had a chance to catch up. He started running again, but half a mile past the checkpoint, Dion started feeling funny. It was his chest. It felt tight. He was having trouble breathing. When he took a drink, it felt like the water was boiling inside him. 
He slowed down more and more. Soon, he was barely shuffling along. This was exactly what he had been afraid of. He was having heart palpitations. Dion got, <clears throat> had gotten them a few times before. It felt as if his chest were going to explode. He felt sick and dizzy. The doctors had said he was drinking too much coffee. But Dion had stopped drinking any coffee at all when he began training for the race. So why was he getting palpitations again now? Was it just the heat and the stress and the exhaustion? Or was there something seriously wrong with him? Up ahead, he saw another race car. Dion staggered toward it. They could help him, but only if he could reach them before he collapsed. Wow, this is scary, boys and girls. We'll have to see tomorrow what happens with Dion Leonard and when he gets to see Gobi again. Have a great day.